Hello, and welcome to the Peak and Poke Computer Museum in Rijeka, Croatia. Here at the museum, we house over 1,000 different games consoles, computers, and various other technological marvels of the past. But today, we are going to focus on the Commodore PET. Although first announced at the Consumer Electronics Show in January 1977, the Commodore PET actually began its life a year earlier when Moss Technologies' Chuck Peddle completed his work on the inexpensive Moss 6502 processor. While creating machines to show off his new chip, Peddle developed the PET concept and unsuccessfully attempted to sell it to then tech giant Radio Shack. Although Commodore had enjoyed success in the calculator market with their CBM line, Texas Instruments, the supplier of the processors, began to produce their own machines and abruptly outpriced its competitors. This, along with the rise of other popular machines like the Apple II and the Radio Shack TRS-80, spurred Commodore's founder, Jack Trammell, to acquire the semiconductor design and fabrication company, Moss Technology. Its patents, staff, production facilities, and the pet concept. Thus allowing for Commodore to enter the microcomputer market less than a year later, making said announcement at CES in 1977. Even though the working prototype was in a wooden housing and had a black and white television purchased from a local hardware store, the demonstration was a success and paved the way for the launch of the production model PET 2001 in October of the same year. The initial model included a keyboard with separate numeric pad, a nine inch integrated blue and white monitor, Chuck Peddle's newly designed one megahertz MOS 6502 processor, 4K of memory, an internal power supply, a practical storage device in the form of a cassette tape drive, and several expansion ports, including an RS-232 serial port, upper and lowercase text, and Commodore Basic burnt into ROM. All of this was included in an all-in-one design that was both retro and futuristic, allowing it to still look good today. This all-in-one design set the pet aside from its competitors as a complete professional business solution. The Commodore Pet would enjoy a long run with multiple versions being released, including the CBM 3000 series in Europe, which was sold for double the price of the 2001, even though the only change in the hardware was a 220 volt power supply. The cleverly named Teacher's Pet was Commodore's attempt to stake a claim in the educational market. The Pet series concluded with the Super Pet 9000, which besides a slightly ludicrous name, boasted a whopping 96K of RAM. Aside from the built-in tape deck, pet owners had a bevy of peripherals available to include disk drives, hard drives, and printers. The pet lacked a programmable bitmap mode, but due to clever use of the characters included in the Commodore Petski, also known as CBM ASCII, users could play many games, including clones of both Space Invaders and Centipede alongside others like Horse Race and Lunar Lander. The pet was a success for Commodore, enjoying a long run, but eventually lost out to its internal competitor, the Commodore VIC-20. Although the Commodore CBM-2 was a direct successor to the pet, it was outshadowed by the VIC-20 and swiftly discontinued for the much more popular machine. If you would like to see this hefty 21 kilo machine or others in the Commodore line, the Peek and Poke houses both the CBM 3000 series and the CBM 8000 series, alongside many other Commodore machines, peripherals, literature, and software. If you like this video and want to stay up to date on the museum, please subscribe to our channel and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.